Hi, and welcome to Be Part of the Team, the podcast hosted by the England Rugby Match Official Development Team. In episode three, we're talking about the coach-referee relationship and why the relationship is so important to help add value to the players on the field. We're going to be talking to Pete Taylor and Stuart Dixon around their experiences in dealing with match officials and helping add value to that relationship. Hi and welcome to this episode of Be Part of the Team with me Owen Taylor. Today I've got two fantastic coaches with us and we're going to talk a little bit about the coach-referee relationship. So I just want to let you two lads just introduce yourselves and, and tell us a little bit about you if that's all right. Thanks uh, Owen, yeah Pete Taylor, um, Yorkshire born and bred, uh, similar to Stuart, played quite a lot of rugby with Stuart so we are good mates outside of this sort of world but currently working for England Rugby, uh, I'm training manager looking after the north of the country. Um, Coaching-wise now, I'm involved in in the boys' pathway, DPP environment. I'm also coaching Yorkshire men's in the Canada Championship. Good stuff, yeah. Um, Thanks, Owen. Really looking forward to this. So, like Pete said, kind of Yorkshire born and bred and been around a bit, as I say. But currently, uh, job-wise, I'm programme lead for the Yorkshire Rugby Academy, so up to and including under-18 in boys. Um, and I get to be Pete's boss for the uh, Yorkshire men. I'm the I'm the chairman of the Yorkshire men. Um, so at the end of the season, we get to have some good fun in the sun. And I suppose going up the chain because I obviously I've just started a little bit of uh, bit of stuff for coaching myself as part of the developing player program as well with Pete. So in turn, you're my boss as well, Dicko. So it all kind of works out, doesn't it? So look, I I think it's really important to to kind of have these these discussions. It's it's really interesting to get involved in in discussions around the coach and, and referee relationship, really. And and it's probably not one that, from a referee's perspective, we, we think about. We don't always think about managing people off the pitch. So it'd be good to just get kind of your thoughts from your perspective and, and where you see that relationship is currently, where you've the experiences that you've had of that relationship in the past obviously good stuff and bad stuff and and maybe some tips for for referees moving forward about how you as as kind of high level coaches would would like to be interacted with and maybe we can start building some of those good relationships so Dicko, obviously we we've, we've started to get into the uh, the premiership academies under 18 stuff so so you're really starting to see a lot of game day bits and bobs now from your perspective why why do you find it so important to to engage with referees um, either on the day or after? What what does kind of your referee engagement look like? Yeah, so I guess in, in terms of that, we're, we're pretty fortunate that the referees are appointed centrally by the RFU for our games. So we get, you know, referees on, on the panel or pushing on with their journey. Um, but I think it's really good to en- engage with them, certainly ahead of time, just to to get an idea of their context, so where their journey is. So we, we might have guys that are on the fringe of Premiership who've done loads and loads of games, or we might be picking up guys that are just coming new to the panel this year, and they you know they've got aspirations to move on. And then linked to that, we you know we we engage with the local societies to pick up assistant referees for the game. So it's it's a massive part of our job that we want to make sure that when the guys come, they're looked after, but but also I guess appreciate our context that. Yes, it's a high level of rugby in terms of under 18 boys, but they're still learning. And um, so that that big piece around, I know we, we'll probably talk about the cell principles and stuff, but that, that learning part is key as well. So getting referees who've got the empathy to go, yeah, I've got to referee what I see, but I also understand that they're learning and still part of their journey. So they play a massive role. Um, and I guess we're fortunate in a way that regardless of the result, you know, we, we look at success slightly differently to, to maybe a head coach at a Nat One Club or or Yorkshire One Club. It, it, it's quite a, a broad question, that, Owen. Um, and, and I think I'd reiterate with Dick on a lot of the academy stuff. So, again, if, if you're coaching kind of championship or you're coaching Nat One, Nat, Nat Two, you, you, you're sort of you're given the referee, the referee's appointed, that, that side of the that side of the of the or that part of the jigsaw is taken care of for itself. And as you go lower down, the, the, and I, when I say lower down, I, I mean mainly age wise. So if it's a Sunday morning um, and you've got a girls under 16 game or a boys under 15, whatever it might be, or even a DPP playing opportunity, I think it's it's really relevant to make people that maybe not aware that referees for those games a aren't appointed and b tend to be, and I say and I use the word tend carefully tend to be 
those that see themselves as coaches first and referees as second, of which I would argue that all coaches, and I think Owen and I, we did a podcast last year on this, didn't we? But all coaches are game coaches, therefore they're referees themselves. Um, and if we don't accept that, we, we're probably going to struggle right from day one. If a coach, and I use the word coach loosely here, if a, if a person who's volunteering in rugby goes on a coaching course, I'd always challenge that individual to say, well, why wouldn't you want to go on a referee's course as well? Because every single training session that pl- that person delivers, they are both coaching and they're refereeing, without any doubt. And also, they're actually more of a referee come game day than they are of a coach, if they're getting it right. Because as we know, there isn't a great deal of coaching you do on a, on a Sunday morning that's going to change the way a player is going to perform, apart from create a positive environment. Um, yeah, that would be my first sort of dipping my toe in the water to answer that question, Owen. So I've probably gone not not very deep there. Um, but No, that's great. I mean, one of the things that we talk about on the on the England Rugby Refereeing Award is it's refereeing different environments. Now, kind of between the three of us, we, we've coached or officiated or been involved in in tons and tons of environments, um, whether, like say, playing, coaching, refereeing. Why should the coach and referee relationship be malleable depending what environment you're in? Yeah, I mean, look, first great word, malleable. Um, well done, that thesaurus at Christmas has paid off. You know, it's, it's got to be enjoyable for them as well. You know, like the turn up and regardless of however many people pay the five quid, have a few pints and then decide that they are the best referees in, in the ground. If the coaches and the however many players, 46, 40, whatever it is, at whatever level you're at, understand where both are coming from, then the experience of those people is what counts. And if some bloke who's had a few pints decides he knows the rook laws better than the fellow with the whistle, then it shouldn't influence the experience of, of the referees. And I think that's a, that's a big thing is, you know, it's their game as well. Like we're, we're all there and we want it to be a positive experience so that, that they stay playing and, and the players should get better for it. Um, and you know yourself, there'd be some some clubs who they go, oh God, we've got, we've got him or her again this week, refereeing us because they've had a bad experience. Or they go, oh, we've got so-and-so this week. He's really good. And it definitely affects the player's mindset and the way they're, to look to go about the game so that's kind of my, my experience of it but coming back to your point about being malleable it, it's got to be you've got to have a conversation about these right these are my expectations as referee and um what are you looking for so i don't know what you think pete on that but that's just yeah i'd say going back in back a few years it, it would be the same now when we were both coaching national league stuff is i, I would make it a priority to include that referee really like I say a few weeks before, but it, it could vary. But I would include that referee in my planning and try and include that referee and make that referee because we're talking we're talking sort of level four and above. The same referee you'll get three or four times in a season. But actually, if you're coaching um, an age grade team on a Sunday morning at under 12s, you're probably going to see the same referee three or four times a season. So it's exactly the same, but it's the same but different, if that makes any sense, guys. Same but different. Um and it's including the referee in in the challenge that the players have got because I I often find players and I'm sure in your environment, Dick, even more so that a player that can work with a referee is showing positive behaviours that you'd want to, that will help them move on both in life and rugby. And I'm still gobsmacked with how players just just cannot understand that a referees will make mistakes. I just I still can't I, I just can't get my head around it. At any level, going back to my point earlier, Owen, about coaches and referees need to start working together, both formally in a classroom in terms of the coaching and refereeing courses, and secondly, in terms of their matches. Um, and just before, I'll give you one example it would be like our kids' first contact course, which is predominantly aimed at novice coaches coaching age grade rugby to get a little dip the toe in the water to have a little go at coaching and refereeing. It's a joint course, but a lot of people come on that course and think it's all about coaching. And that's a, a little shift in mindset that we need to do. Um, so, yeah, loads there, loads there. But, God. Um, yeah, just to pick up on that piece, it's really interesting. Because whenever I've been fortunate enough to deliver on like an error course is you talk to the, the guys that are there on a Sunday morning and say, you're the performance referees. Because everybody on the sideline knows more than you, apparently. The guys that have got ARs at National League and above, 
you know, between the three of them, we'll pick more things up. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I'm yet, it. I'm yet to meet a referee from under nines to first team in champ or prem who don't referee what they see. It's not like they're going there making things up. It's like I've seen this. That's why I've given that decision. And yes, do you know what? I probably have missed something prior, or I've probably not noticed that particular mm-hmm. offence happening before in the game. But I've seen it, and that's why I've made that decision. And yeah. Pete's point there about supporting players to to have conversations that's massive like in in our in our world in the academy world the amount of conversations we have with players about the referee's not going to change their mind and you throwing your arms up in the air and sulking isn't going to have a positive effect so find out what the referee's seeing find out what pictures they want to see and you react to it i mean and that'll change game to game week to week season to season because the laws amend and different referees referee slightly differently in terms of stuff so yeah, I think it's, it's much like Pete says, getting the players to understand how to have good conversations and be proactive rather than just go, well, he's not letting us do this or she's not letting us do this. So we'll just sulk all afternoon. It's, and that, that comes back, Dicko, to like, what are we doing in midweek in training? So in the semi-professional environment or the, or the community rugby that just has a training twice a week, whatever it might look like, is how are we helping players and coaches understand the role of the referee on a Sunday or a Saturday? I think... What's the point of delivering training and then going into a game that suddenly there's a person in the middle of the whistle? Why are we not doing that in training? I I I, I find that quite alarming sometimes. Um, I mean, I think I think for me it's it, it's funny Com- coming up through kind of a would say like a traditional pathway kind of up to where I am of a bit of time served at certain levels and 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 coming up through that traditional route. The higher up I've gotten. And and this might be a, a thing around coaching philosophy and how how different coaches that have maybe gone undergone a bit more CPD and a bit more kind of self awareness from their perspective. The higher up I've gone, the easier I've found it to have conversations with coaches. Significantly easier. I, I know that I can go and speak to any national league coach. Well, pretty much every national league coach and have a genuine conversation in the bar with a beer afterwards, and we can talk about things that I did well, things that I did wrong things they'll ask me questions ask questions of me that how they can like like you said Pete when it comes to Tuesday that they were looking going to look at this specifically how can how can a conversation with me influence what they're going to do in their operations in the week now I think what what because Pete obviously not not too long ago you were kind of coaching in sort of Yorkshire one Yorkshire two as well sort of the still high levels of community rugby how how do you feel that Though the ability to have those conversations or kind of the, the interactions that you had with referees there, how did that maybe differ from when you were coaching in the national leagues or involved in in kind of the county championship stuff now? Yeah, easy one to answer. It, coaching for, say, Malvern Park at Nat One or coaching Yorkshire against Lancashire, 100% I'm confident I can chat to referees, both in the lead up to games even five minutes before kickoff, half time, so on and so forth. Easily. Great conversation. Never a never an issue. The challenge coaching Yorkshire one, Yorkshire two, level seven, eight. I would say it was the it was the, the majority of time I didn't feel I could talk to the referee. And again, that's something that I will judge myself on, not the referee. Of what of what could I do differently as a coach to help that referee feel comfortable to have a chat with me. And I'm not talking about that the old chat after the game when things might have gone well, might not have gone well. I'm on about that build up to the game. And yeah, that I don't know if you found any different Dicko when you've gone through because you've coached at some community level, haven't you? Would you have the same experience as me on that one? Yeah, I'd, I'd probably I'd probably concur with that. That um, it, it's not not more difficult, but you know they different. they are kind of on their own at those levels um, and. Depending which way, I think when you asked me about coming into this this chat, I, I was thinking like, you know, the referees are human as well, so you, you don't know what what's gone on in their world prior to that two fifteen three o'clock on a Saturday, you know. So they if they've had a terrible week at work, so it's like one of your lads that's on the pitch playing for him might have had a terrible week at work and don't give the best version of themselves in that jersey. You know, they are human beings, and and sometimes they're just. They might feel themselves. They get to half time. They go, do you know what? This isn't going as I wanted it to. I've had to, I've had to bin two lads. I've had to do a lot of refereeing, if that makes sense, in terms of 
trying to get the game to go. And then you want to go up to him. I would always try and speak to a referee at halftime and go, is there anything we're doing that you want us to stop? Or is there anything I can pass on to the lads? And, and generally speaking, they'll be like, no, no, it's fine. Or just tell you seven, he's fringing a bit and I'm just, I've got my eye on him, that kind of thing. And sometimes like, go away, coach, I don't want to talk to you. And that's when you know that, that they're probably just having a bad day themselves. And that's why they get a bit defensive. Um, so like Pete says, I think for any club, or school or Sunday morning, whatever, making them feel welcome and making them feel part of the whole experience can only be a good thing. Like if they've had a stinking week at work and they've had to get in the car and drive 45, 50 minutes to a match and they're probably getting petrol expenses and they know they're probably going to cop it from either the coach, the players or the crowd. And they're probably questioning why they do it. And they're going into that game. And then if the club doesn't make them feel welcome and they stick them in a small changing room and there's there's not even like a drink to be had or whatever, they're probably just thinking, I just want to get out of here. By half past four, I want to be wheels turning out of the car park and, and away. Um, so I do, I do think, it, like you asked before, that, that whole kind of link between the refs and the coaches as part of the game day experience is massive. Because I think if we're going to put players at the centre, which is kind of what all our bits of CPD and all our bits of learning talk about putting players at the centre, they're two such key roles from a from a, a coaching and a refereeing perspective by being able to influence that player's experience on the day. And and I think that for them, for us not to have a relationship from a, a coach referee perspective, I, for me it makes it makes very little sense. Because if I'm not in line with maybe what the coaches are trying to achieve or we have a chat before the game and kind of I know maybe some of the game plan or some of the stuff they're trying to achieve the things that I'm thinking about from my perspective is well how can I add value to that how can I add value to help the players achieve what they want to achieve because in turn if they're able to achieve that the coaches generally have a better experience because they've got to do maybe less coaching in inverted I know you said about having to do more refereeing but from a coach's perspective they're going to have to do less coaching because the systems are working well, the players are working well together, maybe the communication's really good. So when things are going well, I think that, that that's that's great. I think what, and you both touched on it there, and it'd be good to kind of know what, what your thoughts are on that, is from your perspective, if things aren't going well, how do we look to approach difficult conversations from a coach's perspective? Yeah, for, again, from some from sort of experience, I think, the biggest frustration for, for players and coaches is when there's a, a perceived um, change during the game. So we talk about trying to adapt to what the referee is doing. So like one week, they might allow a good contest at rook time, whereas other weeks, the referee goes, you know what, the best way of refereeing this is just to clear the area. So I'm going to be really strict on tackle rolling. Um, as soon as the, the nearest support player comes in, I'm going to tell a defender to release. So... Probably what you know, your seven who likes to jackal probably not going to have much impact on that game in that area. But it's when that changes within the 70, 80 minutes that, that players and coaches get frustrated that, OK, so you want a clean area. So you t- tell your lads not to compete, fan out. And then all of a sudden it changes halfway through the game. And um, I think that they're the bits. And I guess it's really it's like if you ask a player to evaluate the performance if the team wins they're probably likely to say yeah I played pretty well if they lose the and they're just as likely to say the ref was poor if they get the wrong side of the result but I think realistically if they're being pretty kind of fair and and sticking to the same way of refereeing throughout the game you could probably then have a much better conversation albeit difficult saying I'm just curious as to why you're refereeing it in that way because our process is, as a team, we want to go pretty hard at the breakdown. You know, why is it that you weren't allowing that com- competition? Because I don't feel we were doing anything against the laws. And he might have a really valid justification for it. But when it's gone, well, in the first half, you weren't allowing competition. And in the second half, it became a free-for-all. What happened there? I think that's when it becomes pretty difficult. Um, and I don't know what your thoughts are on that, Pete, in terms of... Because I'm, I'm one, look, I'm never going to bag a referee. Because I understand it's, it's part of their game. Just like I'd... I'd never really bag a player because I'd probably know them pretty well and know their their context. So at the end of the day, I'm I'm going to take it as read that they're going to go away themselves, reflect, and hopefully get better the week after. Because otherwise, why are they in it if if you're not looking to get better? I'll be the same, Dicko. Like, and, and again, I could, let's use the most recent experience we've got working together, Yorkshire last year. T- two games, like played in like 
very warm weather, games held a skelter. Everyone wants to see a really good game of rugby because that's what it's all about in May. Is the referees are there, and again, and I know it's I might sound like a broken record here, but the referees are part of the team, and I genuinely mean that. And, and I wouldn't, I'm not saying it to them on a podcast, and I'm not, and you two know I'm right because it's what I tell you, but we've got to get that as a behaviour across the game. But I also think, and I hope this doesn't sound too harsh on you, Owen. Sure. The referees have got to play their part in that as well. And I think, like Owen said earlier, the higher you go up the tree, the more it becomes the normal. You're not going to go and be a uh, level five and above referee if you can't communicate with coaches. It's just not going to happen, is it? And I think some of the referees that take up the whistle um, and the more novice referees probably need to learn that, maybe. And the good ones will. And going back to my experience of coaching down the leagues, which it's a good experience to do it, (laughs) without a doubt. Some of the referees there probably know rugby inside out as, as rugby people, but it's how they manage scenarios, which is where they're possibly, and I say possibly because I don't want to call anyone out, but possibly they could get better. You know what, that's it's a really good point because we're not blessed with bags and bags of people wanting to do do the job. Um, so in my world, I go watch a, a school game on a Saturday morning and, and the fella in the middle is... Um, He's going off after this school game to then referee at level eight or nine. And and the types of game will be vastly different, played under the same laws, but vastly different types of game. And you sometimes see referees that, that don't understand or have the empathy for a schoolboy game, which is probably going to be a bit madcap, going to be a few errors. There's going to be lads who might not have that much experience making mistakes and, and being refereed versus in the afternoon, it might be a slower pace and there would be some people trying to, do stuff when the referee's not looking and, and all that kind of... And it, I guess in the utopic world, you'd be able to go, that referee would be excellent in that environment and that's where we're going to put him. And that referee would be excellent in that environment and that's where we're going to put her. But we know we're not. So when people talk about the referee was bad or whatever their judgment is, it's, well, A, without him, we're not going to have a game. But but B, like, does he understand the context in, in which you're refereeing? And, and I don't yeah. know what the easy yeah. way is, Pete, because... They come into the game, they need experience to get better, but when they're new into the game, all they're doing is get criticised for what they get wrong according to us. So they all of a sudden just go, well, what's the point in carrying on doing this? So there must be that kind of attrition. Owen, I I don't really answer this, but what happens when a referee gets to go on like the Amoa? Are they now moving into more environment-specific like learning? Do they get that or not? See, I I, I think for me, talking about refereeing different environments, actually, that is... That's what makes a referee. So, like Dicko said about kind of your Saturday morning school game being followed up in the afternoon by a three o'clock Yorkshire League game. It's all under the same laws, but it's how you apply game context, how you apply materiality and advantage, how you engage with players. What are you looking to try and achieve? What referees need to try and do? And, and and we are getting there with these types of conversations that we're having now is it's about being able to manage the whole game and actually accepting that you are part of the team. There There is there is a lot less us and them in terms of coaches and players on one side and, and just referees on the other. Because the other thing to bear in mind is if, if you're out and you're just a volunteer referee on a on a Saturday or a Sunday, you're on your own. So actually, unless you want to try and become part of this kind of player centric team involving coaches other volunteers and things like that then you end up staying on your own so you've got to want to have those difficult conversations and look I've had bad games in the past a hundred percent and the easy option probably would have been to jump in the car and go home and moan to my coach on the uh, on the phone or ring one of my mates and and get upset on the blower but the the difficult conversation is to go in and go my processes did not work today my process did not did not add to speed safety space or value there's a group of people in there that might be able to give the answers from a different side of the coin so that's where i think from a referee's point of view we can look to have those conversations a little bit more not saying they're easy because they're not they are and it, and it takes some courage to do it but I definitely think it helps add value to you as a referee by being able to do it. But the counterpoint to that would be, and I know you kind of support us over the summer, is is the players also need to understand the referee's context. You know, so like 
all you guys are trying to do, like say around sell or the speed, space, safety, value concepts is is allow the principles of the game to emerge. Um, so you know that the attacking team are trying to go forward and the defending team are trying to stop that go forward and you're using the laws to to make sure that that's, that's a good contest. If, if the players start to understand that's where you're coming from, you know, so what you're doing is preventing that team going forward. However, it's against the law, so I'm going to penalise you. There's other ways of stopping them going forward that are within the laws. Um, and I think our lads really benefited from that. And, uh, you know, a shout out to the intro to refereeing course that, that they kind of went on because it gives you a different perspective. And I think that, um, you know, clubs and coaches and players, like Pete came back to the start, you know, kids' first contact is about a player's experience as a coach and as a referee. That It makes you a better coach if you understand the laws better. And it makes you a better coach if you understand the refereeing context. So, listen, in my journey, I got better as a coach when I became a coach educator because I understand the coaching process better. I then became a better coach because I did some refereeing courses and I understood what the people in the middle, or if, you've, if you're lucky enough to have ARs, what they're trying to get out of the game as well. So I think there's, yes, there's onus on the referees to have those difficult conversations. And and fair play to some of the guys that, that referee in the Academy League, they're really proactive and they'll come and seek you out and sit you down as a group of coaches and go, right, let's have a chat. You know, this is this is what I noticed or this is whatever else. Um, but there's a, there should also be an onus on, on the coaches and players to proactively get either referees into training or or take it upon themselves to get out there and, and do a course. You know, yes, we're all time pressures. Yes, we're all volunteers, et cetera. But you yeah. can't have this Mexican standoff going on for me. I'll, I'll ask a question then, right? And it's a bit of a rhetorical one, but two and a half thousand coaches are on this year's this year's coaching award, right? Nationally, roughly. What are they, what are, let's presume all two and a half thousand really enjoy it. They come through it at the other end and, and, they've, and they feel as if, you know, I'm a better coach now. What are, What's the next step for their journey? They're not going to go on to the Advanced Coaching Award. They're not going to probably suddenly jump into a massively different environment. The next step on their journey for me is to is to start learning about refereeing. It, because as we've discussed throughout this whole call and every single conversation I've had with Owen for years now has been, Coaches and referees are both working together, whether they think that or not. Um, and and I'd, I'd even say vice versa, Owen, that referees that are just purely refereeing, they're not play, they're not coaching anymore. They're not, they're not ref, they're not playing rugby. They're just referees. What's wrong with them going on and learning about coaching? And they don't have to do that formally, do they? They don't have to go on a course. They can go and get involved with the local club. And you know, I think, I think a lot we're talking about here is is common sense. And but it's easy for us to have a chat on a podcast, common sense wise. It's it's more difficult to put it into action for real, isn't it? I get that. I do appreciate that. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I know when when I've done some stuff, when we were just coming out of COVID, I went and did some stuff with a couple of um, Allianz Premier 15s teams. And I tell you what, genuinely, in the three, four hours that I spent with in, in that elite setting, my refereeing went through the roof because it allowed me to look at my processes and go, OK, from my side of the coin, that is what this process looks like. But that doesn't kind of adhere to what the coaches are doing for the same thing in part of their process. So where can I look to add? Where can I put my bits of value into what they're doing? So my scrums got better. My breakdown refereeing's got better. My interaction with players has got better because, again, because I can I can kind of maybe contextualise a little bit more of what they're trying to achieve. And and. I mean, Pete knows I'm on my my coaching award this year. And one of the things I put on Coach Logic is talking about how by doing an entry level um, award, that's allowing me to to look at my refereeing processes as well and, and vice versa. I'd like to think that my operation as a as a coach will be benefited from the stuff that I do as a referee. And, and like you say, vice versa. But so I suppose we'll we'll start getting wrapped up, really, because uh, there's been some really good stuff in here and and. I think that it's been some really good impact stuff. I suppose my final question to you both would be, whichever environment and whichever hat you want to put on, what what makes a good referee from your perspective? I'll, um, I'll go first and I'll, and I'll be very generic, but it's genuine truth. Well, I think person first, they've got to be a good person. Um, so if it's a good person and put context on that, if it's a person that I can have a chat with, whether it's before the game, after the game, during the game, blah, blah, blah. 
I'm then not bothered about the mistakes because I'm going to make a lot of mistakes during a game as a coach. My players will 100% make mistakes. So I'd go good person first. And secondly, you know what? If they know how to interpret laws and they're consistent, that's an added bonus. Well, I'm not talking there about professional referees because they'll, they'll obviously be able to do that. But So a good person first. And then secondly, it's down to can, do they know the laws and can they can they apply them through their processes? Um, Sorry, I went first there, Dicko, because it's probably a hard one to, to, to get into. No, no, I mean, one. yeah, you, you can't really argue with any of that stuff. And and probably for them just to understand that they're not expected to be Wayne Barnes, they're not expected to be Luke Pierce or, or any of those guys, whatever the level of the refereeing at. Um, but also the people watching their performance are viewing them through that lens. So it's just like they see the game on TV and then they expect to see that at the local club on a Saturday or Sunday morning, that it's some kind of version of that. Um, so like Pete says, being a good person, having good, well, yeah, good good people skills, like being able to have a, a good conversation, set um, an environment on the pitch that you know, I don't want to say allows players to, to um, run amok, but, you know, you can have a conversation on the pitch, you know, like, you nearly got that one. I mean, you're you're a cricket fan, Owen, aren't you? When you you'll you'll see yourself in village cricket when your steady Eddie bowler comes on and he'll he'll appeal for one that's going missing set of six, and he got yeah, just sliding down leg that one, and then the next one oh that's a bit closer, and then the third one he gets, which is nowhere near, he's outside the line, he's not played a shot, but it's third one because he's, he's planted the seed. Um, so yeah, so it's that really just, happen in cricket, Dicko? Does that happen? You know as well as I it does, Pete. That's how you get six for every time against those under 11s. But but yeah, just like Pete says, just somebody you can have a conversation with, somebody who's there for the right reasons as well, that it's it's part of the whole experience. It's not just them. Like, look at me, I'm a ref kind of thing. Um, I've not articulated that very well, but... I think, well, I think the, the crux of it is, again, it's it's all down to those interpersonal skills. And, and I suppose to, to put a bow on what we've talked about is it it's that ability to be able to converse and have easy and difficult conversations. Because like you say, Dicker, it's easy to have the quick um, the quick discussion or the really quick comment with, with the captain who's asked you a question and being open and being honest and that really quick answer. But the, the, the other side of it being those difficult conversations and having that self-awareness to go, you know what? Coaches need to be honest with themselves. Do they know the laws inside out? I bet half don't. Yeah. Why not ask a referee that does? You know, I'm sorry to interrupt, Owen, but no, no, but yeah, because I, I think I think that's important, and and that's kind of the 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 summary to all this is that we're all stakeholders in putting the player at the centre of the game, and I think by being able to have a a, a positive, honest, and open relationship it is is only going to benefit the the players on the park. So, so look, I just want to say thanks for your time. Really, really appreciate it. Um, for everybody listening. If you want to access more content around referee training or coaching training or safeguarding, please visit keepyourbootson.co.uk. Uh, and yeah, all that stuff to say is thanks very much, lads, and uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers, Owen. Cheers, Pete. Cheers, guys.